This is the Bet Central podcast. Let's make some profits. Good day, listener. Welcome to the Numbers Game podcast brought to you by Bet Koza and Laduma Analytics. My name is Lee. I'm joined tonight, as usual, by Alexander Rathke, my friend, who's based in Dublin, Ireland. Together, we dissect and discuss the numbers and the statistics around the PSL and anything to do with local football. Alex, how are you doing today? Hi, Lee. All good, my side. It's been a lot going on at the moment, so I'm excited to discuss it all in this podcast with yourself. So am I excited. We are going to do three things today. Listener, we're going to preview the coming weekend. There's some interesting games that are coming up. We're going to look at what happened during the week as well. Sundowns played. Cape Town City played as well. And they were both 1-0 away wins that will kind of look at that. But most importantly, when it comes to the data, we're looking at some shooting data as well, which teams are shooting more from outside the box and inside. And also, most importantly, defensively, which teams are facing less shots and which teams are facing more shots from inside and outside the box. And then lastly, we'll do some predictions for the weekend, look at some of the games and talk about who do we think will win in this instance. Are we ready, Alex? I'm ready. Let's do this. So midweek, we saw Sundowns play and win again. Five games, five wins. That's 15 points to start off the season. It's the first time this has ever happened for a Sundowns team, although it's happened for a few other teams. Uh, we noted Kaiser Chiefs in 1996, Orlando Pirates in 2002, and Kaiser Chiefs in 2014 as well. But things are looking ominous here, man. Sundowns winning five games in a row on top of what they've already done last season. What is this? How do you make this out? Oh, I don't know. How do you make this out? That is a good question. I mean, what does it come down to? So the question for me is, are they getting better and better every season? I would say yes, based on this. And we're seeing it on a on a year-to-year and a season-per-season season performance. But how are they doing it and what are they doing? I think those are the kind of two questions that drive the other question and the result of the other question. Yes, absolutely. I think... Five wins from five is a, is a very rare achievement. Notoriously, Sundowns are actually slow starters in the league. I remember last season, I think they only won two out of the first five games. But then they started getting better after the coaching changes and went on in this crazy winning streak until the very end. The how they're doing it is a, it's a deep conversation. I think it's a question on management outside the field as well as on the field. It's a question of recruitment as well. But most importantly, from what the coach has said this week, it's a culture question. There is a culture that's going on there at Sundowns, which is very hard to replicate for many teams, but it's a winning culture. That's what you can call it. There's been conversations about the PSL becoming a farmer's league. <laughs> I always laugh at those. Um, I have my own personal opinions about it, but it's a conversation that comes every now and then. Six league titles in a row is not an easy feat. But while it's not an easy feat, it does bring questions into the competitiveness of the league. But for me, I think the number one thing that stands out for Sundowns is a winning culture. And that is shown both in the players that they sign and the players that they already have who continue to be just the best in the league. Yeah, I, get, I, I think I agree with you on that one. I think in the sense that Obviously, every club is going to go, in terms of play acquisitions, they're going to go a different direction. Either you bring the best locally-based players together and you maybe scout abroad every once in a while and bring a player from the continent, or you keep a different kind of culture. Uh, money also plays a, a factor in that. Are you willing to spend? How much are you willing to spend? What are you willing to spend? And you know, what are you looking to do out of those resources that you have? Indeed. Indeed. So the question now is, or the comments that are appearing now every time we post a stat on social media is, oh, they're going to win every game. We're going to win 30 out of 30 games. We're going for 90 points. <laughs> oh, we're going to break all the records in the world. And do you think it's possible for a team, let alone Sundowns, to win 30 out of 30 games in a season? I don't think it's possible myself. I think that's very unlikely. It is It's a taxing season that's coming nine months of football it may look like everything is good and rosy now but then it's it's it's, it's, it's hard to extrapolate that into the rest of the season um what do you think do you think they can win 30 out of 30 games and get 90 points no and the reason i tell and the reason i say no is because 
Now, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong. They are playing in the league. They're playing in two domestic cups, correct? Yes. Then they're playing in the CAF Champions League, and also this year it will be the Super League, correct? I'll correct you. It's actually three cups. They're playing the league, three domestic cups, which is the MTN. That's true. The, yes. The Culling Cup, which is the replacement of the Telkom knockout, and then later on in the season, the Nedburn Cup. Plus CAF Champions League, plus the Super League. Rulani said it himself. You're looking at 70 plus games in the season. And that's going to be a lot. It doesn't matter how big your squad is. That's going to take some beating. And it's going to be a loss on, on an off day. You're not going to see the loss coming. That's what I think. So at the moment, they've won five out of five. The record for the start of the season is to win eight out of eight. And at the moment, it looks like it's achievable. But the next three games are not going to be very easy. In fact, they're going to be very difficult. And it wouldn't surprise me. They may get to the 31-game unbeaten mark because now they're currently on 29. But then if they don't win the next three games, I wouldn't be surprised. It looks all easy right now, but winning games is not that easy, which brings us to the point of expected points. The question is not about the points that they're taking. When you see a team taking 15 points from five games, it's natural for the mind to assume they're going to take 45 points from the next 10 games, you know? But yes, I think we need to talk about expected points and listeners and readers need to understand that. Even if a team wins three points at the end of the day, that's not the true reflection of their performance or a true reflection of what happened on the field. Yeah, because in a sense, you have to give um, a ability for the other team to collect some sort of points based on their performance. So depending on how you perform, that indicates how many expected points you will get from a game. There's also an element of a, a draw, a percentage of that the game could have ended in a draw, so you have to account for that. Um, so there's an ele element of adding all these performances together, which adds the number of points together, which is the expected points. So you're not going to have 15 from five games in this case that Sundowns do. Based on how they're playing, one would look at you know, a slightly lower number than that, but still a good reflection of how they're currently performing. Yes. Unfortunately, we don't have the expected points data right now, listener. Um, we'll have it in a couple of weeks' time. But then from experience, they have 15 points now. I can tell you that the expected points total is probably around eight, maybe nine at most so that's the points that they should have had based on the shots that they've taken the quality of chances they've created and the quality of chances that they've considered on the other end so nine maximum 10 points you're looking at expected at this point in time um, this brings me to talk about strikers as well we always see this when a season starts there's a striker who scores five goals in the first five games and immediately everyone jumps up and says, wow, we have someone who's going to break Collins Masuma's record. He's going to score 30 goals this season because he has five in five. Therefore, if he plays 30 games, he's going to have 30 in 30. But not people, or what we don't usually look at is what is the underlying numbers? What's the expected goals with that? Because a striker may have five goals, but his XG is actually 2.5. And so if you extrapolate that over the course of the season, his total goal is going to be about 15 goals. And what do you know? At the end of the season, we always get ourselves the top goal scorer having 15 goals because that's how expected goals and expected points works. So the point we're trying to make here, listener, is that it's not about the points that have been accumulated or the goals that have been scored. It's about this metric that's called expected points and expected goals. That's a better predictor of the future than the actual points on the table. That is true. And we look forward to looking into those numbers and uh, dissecting them and understanding them based on the on the video, based on the performances, based on the data, and based on how the team is playing and the players are playing in that system that the teams are currently playing. But Lee, next up, I think we should look at some shooting data because there's something here that's telling me Sundowns are becoming more efficient, which is a danger for the league. Let's hear that. Let's hear more. You found this data, man. Share it with us a bit more. So we had a look at, obviously, there's five games have been played in the current season, 23-24. So we look back to last season, at the start of last season, first five games, 22-23. How many shots have been taken uh, and the difference between the two? Now, there's 
not a huge amount of difference in the comparison to last season to the current amount of this season. Last season, they took 68 shots in the first five games. This season, they took 72, so four more than last season. Shots on target, though, are a lot more efficient. Eight more shots on target than last season. But goals, there's only one more goal than last season. So 10 last year, last season, first five games, 11 first five games this season. Is there anything there that stands out to you for you, Lee? I mean, I can focus on the defensive side of things um, in that I remember last season, um, Sundowns had a very good clean sheet record and basically a whole defensive record. In the end, I think Ronan Williams even won the Golden Glove, number one. And secondly, he broke the record for clean sheets in a season. But what we're seeing now this season is that the defense, they have considered a few goals already, but it's actually much more compact. They have considered two goals already this season, but they're not allowing too many shots to come on their end. At the same stage last season, Sundowns had 50 shots taken at them. This season, they only have 36. That's an improvement of about 14 shots in five games. We're talking about three shots per game, less. In terms of shots on target considered, they had 14 at the stage last season. And this season, they're only on 11. So we're looking at two shots against per game compared to three shots per, against per game last season. But at the same time, they've considered two goals on both fronts. So I'm seeing here a tighter defense. But a tighter defense doesn't necessarily mean you'll concede less goals. You know, you can have a tighter defense, but then face some really clinical strikers. Face Erling Haaland, for example who will take a chance from outside the box and bury it in the back of the net. It's more about how are you controlling your defensive zones? How are you controlling your final third? How are you controlling yourselves in the final, in your box as well? How many shots are being taken? Where are the shots being taken from? And at the moment, the data that we have shows us that Sundown is actually conceding less shots on the defensive side. So that may translate to a better defensive record overall, or it may not. The XG data, once it becomes available, will give us a bit more insight into that. That is that is definitely true. And and even for um, location-wise, for shots taken, they, again, they're taking nearly uh, twice as many shots inside the box than outside the box, which is what you would want um, and what you would expect from a Sundance team. So very efficient inside the area or, or able to get inside the opposition area and take opportunities from there, and but also have the ability to take shots from distance you're thinking of the likes of um, Tebo Mokwena, who likes, likes a shot from distance, but also they have the ability to move the ball into areas and where they are more clinical. Indeed. Indeed. Let's move on to the next thing. Thank you, Sundowns. Good luck in the coming games. As we say, it's just going to get tighter and tighter, man. They're going to get games every three days. There will be less rest time for the players. They'll have to do rotations of um, playing stuff. Uh, they will have to bench some players, they're going to be suspensions. The one thing that's concerning about Sundowns, I don't know if it's intentional or not intentional, is the number of fouls and yellow cards. Man, something is going on there. Um, if they're taking a book out of the PEP magazine of professional fouls or tactical fouls, then, hey, they've done that very well. I think they're the team with the highest fouls this season and the team with the most yellow cards already this season. One of their players is actually on four yellow cards and may face a suspension if he gets, I think, one more yellow card or something. So there is something happening on there. Maybe that's the cause of the defensive solidity that we're talking about. I don't know. But once you get suspensions as well as the season progresses, you're not going to win 30 out of 30 games. I'm sorry. It's a it's a good dream to have. It's a good aim to have. But it's probably impossible to win 30 out of 30. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's highly unlikely. I mean, um, yeah, I, I just don't see it happening. Let's, let's, I'll be frank about it. Let's put it that way. Okay. Okay. Let's switch over. Listener, we're going out to another team that is big, B-I-G. We're talking about Kaiser Chiefs at the moment. And what's going on? Everything is going well at Sundowns. Five wins out of five. Six if you include the MT and eight. It's a perfect start. But then on the other hand, at Naturena, we have zero wins from three games. One out of four, if you include the Cups. And the question that we're asking ourselves and discussing for the next few minutes is, what is happening at Kaiser Chiefs? Alex, where do you want to start? 
I think uh, in some ways, maybe start with the the points. I mean, at the moment, for the last four seasons and maybe beyond, um, which you might you might know more of, uh, but this is the lowest number of points they've had uh, after three num- three games in the last four seasons. So on one point at the moment, and up until even last Ouch. season, they've had you know between five or six points. Um, I guess between after you know three games, so it's a slower start. But we have seen over, especially the last two seasons, that they go through a run kind of around halfway, maybe a quarter way through the season, third way through the season, around that around that time frame where they pick up a lot of points and go on a run. So one might still see that from Chiefs. But as a Chiefs fan, as a Chiefs player, as a Chiefs technical team member, anyone involved with Chiefs wants to see the team go from the start and pick up points and challenge the likes of Sundowns and be up there, you know, with the number of points that Sundowns have, which currently they're not. And it's a very, a bit of a, it's a bit of a worrying sign when Sundowns already have 15 points and you only have one as a Chiefs team. Yep. It is a worrying thing. I'm looking here. I've gone back into the archives and looked at what do Chiefs points totals look like after three games. So they currently have one point, right? Yes. And the last time they had, okay, good thing, Chiefs fans, they've never had zero points after three games. That's a good thing. (laughs) But then they've had, (laughs) in 2009, they had one point after three games. So that has happened before. They had one point after three games. But the good thing is, even out of that, they ended up the season in third position, having collected one out of the first nine points. But like you say, the last few seasons have been much better. We're talking about three points last season at the same stage, four points the season before, four points the season in 2020-21, still after COVID. And then they had seven points at the start of the 2019-20 season when they almost won the title. So there is a regression in this points total at this stage of the season. But the good news for Chiefs fans is it's still early. You had the same number of points in 2009, but finished in third position. And if you ask any Chiefs fan at the moment, would you take third position in the league at the end of the season? I'm sure many of them will say yes. I think in some ways you you would, but I guess in in, in, in other ways, as a Chiefs fan, you have to kind of also take into account that you have changed coach again. Your main coach has now uh, become an assistant coach. And that is also going to change the dynamics again with the team. There's a change of, of of leadership. There's a change of management. There's a change of possibly a bit of playing style, which we will talk about uh, in a while. Um, so that all factors into how that goes. And one has to take account for this. But how long will Chiefs fans want to give uh, a new coach time? Because you don't really get time uh, at a club that is of stature of Chiefs. And we have seen that over the last couple of seasons. Yep, you don't get time. Time is a precious commodity on the streets. Um, let's do the same for the points, the short story. Let's look at the short data for Kaiser Chiefs and talk about maybe what's going right and what's going wrong. The one thing we know from last season is that, not even last season, the last three seasons or so, is that Chiefs always create chances. They are one of the highest chance creating teams 2020 21 21 22 and 22 23 chiefs are either in the top two or worst case in the top three but they have no issue when it comes to creating chances the issue they've always had is when it comes to finishing those chances and getting those goals what do you have for us when it comes to short data alex concerning kaiser chiefs so you've you raised a really good point there because the last couple of seasons they've created a lot of chances but this season, it's a complete reversal of that. So this season, after three games, so they've played obviously two games less than, than Sundowns, so we're going to only look at the data from a three-game perspective, three league games. Last season, they s- took 47 shots. This season is 25, so it's nearly nearly kind of nearly half, um, wow. which is That's already big, kind of worrying. That's a big drop. That's a big drop, but again, that comes down to or, or, or does it? Or is there is there a factor of the change in coach, change in player personnel, change in kind of 
styles, changing how they want to play, change of creation, all those things come into that factor. But it also comes across in shots on target. So they have nearly a third less shots on target than last season. So 17 shots taken that hit the target last season after three games, six this season. So 17 to 6. 17 to 6. That's bad. Yeah. But I mean, so even the ability to create chances, and that's why you brought in, you know, the, the players of, um, of likes of uh, Ranga, Chivero, and also the new um, striker who comes from South America. He hasn't started a game yet. He hasn't played a game yet, I believe. Um, but he has arrived in South Africa. His work visa is there. So he might be playing at the weekend. You never know. Um, but it's one of those things you want to be able to create, and that's what they've done the last couple of seasons, but currently they're just not doing it this season. And that would be a worry for me because you would want to go and create those opportunities for the players that you're bringing in who are, you are hoping that finish those opportunities. Indeed. Um, I'm a fair believer of that it's still early in the season. Hey, I don't want to read too much into this data, um, but even three games in, and there's a bit of a concern here. On the one hand, you're saying the shots taken has gone down. I'm focusing on the shots against data on the defensive side of things, and things have gotten much worse. So last season at this stage, Chiefs had considered 25 shots. This season, it's 44. They had eight shots on target considered against them. This season, it's 19. That's over two times as much. They had considered five goals last season, and fair enough, this season, they have much better. They are on three goals considered. But if sundowns are improving, both on the attacking front and on the defensive front, at this stage of the season, whereas Kaiser Chiefs are getting worse on those two aspects, that is early stages. Again, it's still early in the season, but that is a bit of a red flag for me in that there's something that needs to change very fast in terms of Kaiser Chiefs improving, especially on the defensive side of things, which is where they need to solidify first. I think that was the plan, actually, in some of the interviews that the coach had, is that they want to be more defensively solid. And watching them, despite all these shots considered and all these numbers, watching them, the times where they just look much more compact defensively. But again, the issue of attacking still has to be fixed in that you can't create chances so much and not finish them. It, it actually looks worse. You'd rather be not creating chances at all and not finishing them. But now it's like they create so many chances, but they don't finish. I wonder what's going to happen going forward. Yeah, and um, in some ways, um, I suppose we can move on to the games of the weekend. And amongst those is Chiefs playing Amazulu. And Amazulu are one of the teams who have yet to score a goal, but also who have yet to concede a goal. So if you are playing Amazulu, you are knowing that this team is going to come at you with you know, ability to create chances, wanting to score a goal as well, and you don't want to come away from this with another defeat and a team that is looking to score goals. So it's going to be... I think that's a game I'm looking, really looking forward to the weekend, seeing how that unfolds. Indeed. Um, <laughs> so what we have here is Amazon haven't scored a goal in almost 500 minutes in the league, hey? So we're counting five games in a bit in terms of scoring, themselves scoring. And then on the other hand, like you say, they have three clean sheets in the first three games of the season. So <laughs> there's something going on there. It's going to be very... If those two stats are anything to predict the future, sometimes they're not. Stats are like that. Sometimes it's about what happened in these last three, four games. But then if those two are anything to predict the future, then... We're looking at a nil-nil or at most a one-nil win for either team. But it doesn't look like there's going to be too many goals in that game. But like you say, it will still be an interesting game to watch. Definitely. And uh, is there any other game that stands out for you for this coming weekend? I think the, any other game is every other game. So there's not a full schedule this weekend. I think maybe we can do... We used to do this last season. Maybe we can start doing it again. Predictions. Who do you think is going to win the five games on this coming weekend, no pressure. Um, the winner buys the winner buys a beer for the loser, I guess. No, <laughs> the other way around. The loser buys a beer for the winner. Let's do it. Cape Town Spurs okay. looking for their first win versus Cheaper United. Who do you think will win that one? Um, 
I think this is going to be interesting as well because, I mean, as you said, Cape Town Spurs are looking for the first win. Chipper have had three draws so far out of the four games. They played well against uh, Pirates and Sundowns as well. I'm going to make maybe a draw for me on this one. I'm going to be bold and say Spurs are going to win. Okay. Cool. Next game is Golden Arrows hosting Polo Pone City on Saturday. So Polo Pone City have had a really good start to the season. Three games played, two wins. Uh, I like the way they're playing. Uh, no fear coming up from uh, the coming up the division last season. So I'm going to go Polo Pone City against Golden Arrows. Okay. Here's a stat for you for Polo Pone City. So they have six points from the first three games, right? Yes. They had six points from the first three games in 2019 as well. Exact same record. Played three, won two, lost one. But in that season, they ended up 16th. They ended up relegated. Yeah, that was the season where I think they got to like 13. Uh, I think they got to like a certain number of points and then just didn't win for a period of time. For a very long time. So it may seem like they've started well. I mean, they have started well. But things can change very quickly in this league. Uh, yes. For this game, I'm going for a draw, hey? Okay. I'm going for a draw. I think Arrows at home, they're pretty decent at home. Um, and Polo Guano is over travel. I think they, that may cost them a little bit. What was your result, by the way? I uh, went for a Polo Kwane City win. Okay, this is interesting. Next game is Chiefs Amazulu. What do you think there? So the game we've just talked well, we've talked about Chiefs just uh, five minutes ago. So based on everything we've said, I would still go for a Chiefs win here. I believe that they can beat Amazulu. Now I wouldn't say that. I, I still think Amazulu will score, but I think Chiefs will come away with a win. Okay, I'm with you on this one. Chiefs win for both. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is Stellenbosch hosting Super Sports United. Um, second time this teams meet this season. Stellenbosch won the first game one nil in the net bank, in the MTN eight cup. What do you think is going to happen here, Alex? So uh, only a point difference between the two teams. Same number of games played. Uh, Supers will have a yet to concede a goal in the league. So I think it might be revenge here. I would go maybe <laughs> Super Sport to come away with a win. Although Stellenbosch are playing really well, so it's a it's a it's a it's a real kind of one that throws me up. Um, I'm yeah, I'm gonna go Super Sport win. Okay, that's cool. I'm gonna go for a Stellenbosch win, brother, um, or a draw. I'll, I'll I'll be on the fence in this one. Stellenbosch win or draw? No, that's not allowed. Because what? <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna go all out then and say Stellenbosch win. Okay, only because Super Sports away form has been terrible. So, this is Super Sports' 10th away game in the league, right? Okay. Since the beginning of the year, since uh, 3 January 2023. They won that game on 3 January 2023. I was there physically at the stadium watching that. But then since then, the next nine games have provided four losses and five draws. Four losses and five draws. So, they are winless in nine away games ever since the first game of the year. So that's why I'm going Stellenbosch's way. Fair, fair. I want to accept that that uh, that level of research into your predictions. <laughs> um, now the last game, Royal AM TS Galaxy. I'll let you go first on this oh, one. Man. Royal AM, they need a point. I'm just going to feel sorry for them here. They need the point. Uh, where do they stand now? Three games, zero wins, one draw and two losses. Can they beat TS Galaxy? I'm going to say draw <laughs> you're gonna say draw okay yes. i'm going to go with a tx galaxy win and i'm going to tell you why mm -hmm. so for me i'm going to go tx galaxy win because royal am have conceded the most number of goals so far this season which is seven okay and tx galaxy are have taken amongst the most number of shots in the game okay. in the league this season from three games um okay. now the the difference between the two is uh, well the difference for ts galaxy is that they've taken nearly amount the same amount of shots pretty much 
inside the box versus outside the box. But okay. they have a really good shots on target rate and a the shot conversion rate isn't great now, but uh, then again, you're facing a team like Royal AM at the moment who are just leaking goals. So um, that's why I'm going to go for T's Galaxy win. Okay, I'll stick with the draw, man. And I will see you on Monday when we dissect these. Monday or Tuesday when we look at how these games went. Alex, thank you again for your time. Listener, thank you for being with us here. Remember, you can find all our written work on the Bet Central website, betcentral.co.za. There you find detailed data, deep dives into teams and players, not just in soccer, but also in other sports as well. Thank you for your time. Cheers. Thank you.